Greetings, dear listeners. We're out here tonight to welcome the full super harvest moon of September the 29th, 2023. And it's our anniversary. Dr. Curious and I have been happily married for 167 years. But we didn't come out here tonight just to show you the harvest moon. Although, considering the day, maybe it should be the honeymoon. No, we didn't come out here tonight just to show you the full super harvest moon or to talk about our wedded bliss, but to get some footage for my upcoming upload, which is about a werewolf on trial, a werewolf in court. I call it not guilty by reason of lycanthropy, by reason of of lycanthropy. So stay tuned for that. But for right now, I'm going to ask my lovely and talented bride of 167 years, Dr. Curious herself, to give us a panorama shot of tonight's full harvest supermoon. We're going to collect a lot of footage tonight for my upload, but she's going to give us a panorama shot of tonight's full harvest moon. And I think I've been really good. I didn't even try to sing that song. So, stay tuned till midnight. Cheers. By the light of the silvery moon. Hey, that's not the right song. Not guilty. You don't understand, he said in his deep baritone. When the moon is full, I turn into a wolf, and I have no idea of what I've done when I wake up the next morning, back in my human form. Crown Attorney Winslow was worried. The story told by the accused, Duncan Marsh, was so over the top, so crazy, he feared the jury would find him N.C.R., not criminally responsible. In other words, insane. Any reasonable person would think that Marsh was crazy. After all, he had torn his victims, including his girlfriend, literally to pieces. There had been four murders in all, and Marsh had ripped his victims apart, actually eating their flesh like some sort of sadistic monster. Winslow thought he was a sadistic monster, but a perfectly sane, sadistic human monster who was putting on a crazy act in hopes of being sent to a mental hospital instead of prison for life. A mental hospital from which he might be released as cured within a few years. To Winslow, there was no evidence to suggest Marsh was mad. He had no history of mental illness, no run-ins with the law, no criminal record. He had a responsible job as an IT specialist with an excellent work record. He came from a good family, had lots of friends, and he had slaughtered four people. And that story about being attacked by a werewolf while out jogging. Indeed. (laughs) No. No, he was faking it. Winslow was sure of it. Plus, Plus, the crown attorney wanted to win. If there was one thing he hated, it was losing a case, especially one as open and shut as this one was. The jury had been out over two hours, too soon to tell which way they were leaning. But then Winslow became aware of a bustling out in the hallway, a sure sign the jury was coming back. The moment of truth was at hand. Marsh was led into the courtroom, and Winslow just stared. He he looked like hell. Maybe... He figured they were going to convict him, but but no, no, it was more than that. 
the man looked positively ill. His face had gone deathly pale and was running with perspiration, while his bloodshot eyes were practically bugging out of his head. Was he going to faint? Strangely enough, Winslow realized that Marsh wasn't looking towards the jury. Instead, he was staring at the open windows through which came the cool night air. Court had sat late, awaiting the jury's return, and outside the darkness had taken control. Is that why Marsh was staring at the windows? He felt that his freedom was slipping away? Or was he going to make a run and try to jump out? The courtroom was on the ground floor and he could easily gain the street. Winslow wondered if he should tell someone, maybe mention it to the sheriff. But just then, the judge returned to the courtroom and this was it. After the preliminaries were over, the judge said, Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? The spokesperson rose. We have, Your Honor. Do you find the defendant, Duncan Marsh, guilty or not guilty? Guilty! Winslow felt a momentary elation, which was ended by a strangled cry. Marsh had stood up in the prisoner's box, his body shaking with convulsions, his hands over his face. And Winslow noted with a start how hairy they were, how long the fingernails were, like claws. Marsh took his hands away from his face, and somebody shrieked. Duncan Marsh's pale face had disappeared, and it had been replaced by the head of a wolf, a wolf with red eyes, a long, dark snout, pointed ears, and a mouth of sharp and glistening fangs. Marsh had told the truth. He was a werewolf. And suddenly Winslow realized why he had been staring at the windows. The lurid rays of a ripe yellow October moon, a full moon, were streaming into the room, the light falling full on the man in the prisoner's box. Marsh's hairy body ripped through his orange prison jumpsuit, and he, it, the werewolf leapt from the box and fell upon the crown prosecutor and ripped him to shreds. Today, outside courtroom 13, there is a plaque dedicated to the memory of Roy F. Winslow, who gave his life in the performance of his duties on behalf of the people of the community. It uh, actually takes longer to read the plaque than it did for the werewolf to dismember him. As to the werewolf, to Duncan Marsh, he, it, jumped out into the night and is still at large despite being convicted of murder. But... But, but, but if I may make a suggestion, I think a more appropriate verdict would have been not guilty by reason of lycanthropy. Of the silvery moon. Hey, that's not the right song.